Hello, welcome back to Best Dish the Chefs, where four of the nation's top professionals are battling it out for a pair of places in Friday's regional final. Our main course chefs have already sampled the pressures of the Best Dish kitchen, and if you want to follow in their footsteps without John, Gillian, and Ed breathing down your necks, of course, all of today's recipes and some exclusive top tips are available at itv.com forward slash food. But now it's time for dessert and our final head to head. It's Russell Brown with his salted toffee tart with creme fraiche sorbet versus Eddie Rains with his apple and blackberry crumble with custard donut and blackberry sorbet. Salty, fruity, sweet, something for every taste bud in that little lot, I think. Gentlemen, this is your one shot at the regional final. Start cooking. My name's Russell Brown. I'm the chef proprietor at Siena Restaurant in Dorchester. We're probably the smallest Michelin-starred restaurant in the country. 15 seats. That's all we've got. Cooking for me has been a career change. And I was running a fishing tackle business. At 27, I made the decision to uh, become a chef professionally. I got myself a place at college, then I saw a job advertised for a commie chef. I rang up and I applied for the job, and I got it. Food was a really important part of, uh, of my life. Growing up in the 70s, and dinner parties were all the rage, and pick your own, and filling the freezer with soft fruit that probably never saw the light of day until it went in the bin. A second star. My wife said she'll divorce me if we get a second star, so maybe it wouldn't be a brilliant idea. I'm Eddie Rains, the head chef here at the Wheat Chief Coombe Hay. I am quite a young head chef. We've got quite a small kitchen and quite a young team, a young brigade. Eddie, as a chef, he's a real good man. Like He's really calm in the kitchen. Whenever we step out of line, he's always there. You know, put us back in. <laughs> We've got um, a baby on the way. That's going to be the, the next test of my career, is uh, juggling uh, family life with uh, the head chef position here. The judges, one of them, has a very similar name to mine. And when I was about 16, my uncle read a national newspaper with a big article on Ed Baines. He thought it was just a spelling mistake, and he thought it was me, but no. One ham sandwich, one cheese sandwich, one chip. Three weeks ago, we had a really good write-up in the Daily Telegraph. So hopefully one day, the uh, spelling mistake will be corrected. It will be Ed Rains in the national newspapers. So that's how they got here, but do they have the dish to go all the way? Well, we shall see. So, Russell, how are you getting on? Doing all right, thank you, I think. How confident are you feeling today? Uh, pretty good today, actually, yeah. Yeah, better than yesterday, I think. What, did you suffer some nerves? <laughs> yeah, a little bit yesterday, but today's good, so we're all right. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm very intrigued because I absolutely personally love salted caramel. It's a kind of yep. become a bit of an obsession. It's one of those things that you see a little bit more than you used to, but it's still quite unusual, sure. isn't it? No, it is fairly, but I think it is a bit of a modern classic, really, and it, it builds on those sort of sticky toffee pudding, treacle tart kind of flavours. Yeah, but what does. about the element of competition, then? You're here That's today, right. aren't you? Are, you? are you coming into this determined to win? I mean, how do you approach this sort of event? No, well, you don't enter something like this without the intention of winning it. So, yeah, of course I'm determined to win. Good luck. Lovely. Enjoy Thank you. it. I'm looking forward to seeing the finished results. Great. OK. And hello, welcome to Best Dish. Hi. Now, tell me about what you're cooking today. Basically, I'm cooking an apple and blackberry crumble. Mm -hmm. um, so it's based on a great British classic, but I've just taken, polished it up a bit, given it a few new different twists with sort of childhood memories and uh, so we've got some jelly, some ice cream, a custard donut uh, and also a little bit of grown-up twist. I've got some uh, cider in, set in the jelly. Jilly will like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, enjoy. Yep. And uh, yeah, it looks lovely, I must say, already. Thank you. I'll catch Cheers. up with you later. Russell's making salted toffee tart with sorbet and orange reduction. He starts by blending milk, water and creme fraiche as the base for the sorbet. It's a dish that I am passionate about. It hits all the flavour sensations. You've got sweet, you've got sour, you've got salty. Different flavours, the different temperatures, the different textures. There are a couple of watch points on the dish. Making the caramel for the filling is probably the major one. It's very specific on its temperature. Turn the back for a minute and you've got a smoking pan and you're definitely up a creek without a paddle then. Russell may have come late to professional cooking, but he's bang up to date with his technique. His approach to cooking is... is very detailed. It's, it's bordering on, well, it is quite scientific, really. He also um, uses ingredients um, 
that you wouldn't normally see. For example, in his um, creme fraiche sorbet, he's got glucose, which is normal, mm. sugar, and uh, creme fraiche. Citric acid. But he adds citric acid, um, glycine. Yeah, so, and all um, the stuff that you that they add as preservatives in a bought ice cream or sorbet. Yeah, the commercial And um, I just don't get it. Well, as Russell rolls sweet pastry for his tart, his method here is rather more traditional. We know that he's a professional chef, this guy, and he's making his pastry on marble. Keep it really cold, really cold. And temperature is key, as next, Russell moves on to his filling. He's taking that down to a very, 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 very dark colour, and I'm not quite sure why. Um, maybe he's trying to get the bitterness introduced into the dish, and that works. But he's just warming up and cooling down, and generally orchestrating the temperature of the sugar with clinical precision. This is a bit show-off. There's so much science here. He's using the sugar at different temperatures to create different textures and different effects throughout the tart. It's just mind-blowing. Mind-blowing science may be part of Russell's routine, but he still employs principles held by any professional chef. All good cooks, generally, you start sort of working this methodical pattern. You also, psychologically, you've always got a nice clean space to work in. You don't get yourself into a tangle and a mess. Mm. But with time running out for his sorbet to set, the big question is, has the scientific chef needlessly complicated things? Mm. And all these things that you add will change the overall texture of the sorbet, but it won't make it any better and it won't make it set. What makes it set is the sugar. You don't need all these chemicals in it, I promise you. Well, I'm going to approach the tasting of it as though I haven't seen any of this. I'm going to just taste, taste. it and see if it's better that. than taste. something you can do simply. It's got to be better or else it won't go through. Russell's opponent, Eddie, is combining an apple and blackberry crumble with donut, sorbet and jelly. Eddie may be young, but he's been a chef for just as long as his rival. I don't really know what to expect from Russell. He's got a Michelin star, but I'm sure I can rustle up a better dish. I think this is Britain's best dish because crumble is quintessentially English. Apples, blackberries, local cider, it's basically the West Country on a plate. There's two main elements that could, that I'm a little bit apprehensive about jelly and sorbet setting in that time, is the, the two main hurdles I have to uh, overcome. With twin concerns about setting, Eddie quickly loads the ice cream maker with his sorbet mix. Blackberry puree, water, sugar, glucose and lemon juice. No glycine. He was worried about the sorbet setting in time and of course it, it needs to be nice and firm, it needs to have a lovely texture. Next, the jelly. A cider sugar gelatin mix goes into moulds with a blackberry. He puts them in the freezer before adding oats to a classic crumble mix which he bakes in the oven. But everybody has one in their family in a tradition. In order to go through, it's got to be a crumble among crumbles. No time to waste, Eddie's straight onto his donuts. He's made this wonderful dough. You leave it, it puffs right up, just roll it out, shape it, then put it to the side again. Let, Let it prove again. Reprove, re-rise. Leaving his balls to reprove, he starts the creme patissiere custard filling, whisking sugar, egg yolks and flour, then pouring over hot milk and vanilla. There is a little bit of jeopardy in this because he's got to take it back to the pan to cook mm. out the egg yolks. Um, it can curdle, it can catch on the bottom of the pan and it's curtains. Having handled that without disaster, Eddie leaves his custard to cool in the fridge, then deep fries his rapidly proved donuts. Oh, look, aren't they lovely? Mm. They are beautiful. But there's yet another issue to overcome if this dish is going to gel. The creme patissiere isn't thick enough because it hasn't set yet. Oh, dear. He needs to leave that to the very last minute. With three items now waiting to set, the young head chef has set himself up for a high-wire finish. It's a real step up, isn't it, from our regular best dish. Actually, at stake is their reputation. These guys earn their living from cooking. It's mm. a totally different competition. It's a totally different ball game, and that's what makes it so incredibly exciting. Coming up, food for thought for one dessert chef. If you come back, you could rearrange your time order and method. And when four nervous professionals learn their fate, one gets the offer of a lifetime. Before Ed gets in, um, I'd like to offer you a job. This week, we're offering you the chance to shop till you drop, as we're giving away a mammoth two and a half thousand pounds of Tesco vouchers for you to spend in store or online. Answer the following question correctly to be in with a chance of winning. What would you call a boiled egg wrapped in sausage meat and breadcrumbs? A. English egg. B. Irish egg or C. Scotch egg. Call 0901 293 0077. Calls cost no more than £1.03 pence from BT Landlines. Calls from other networks may be higher and from mobiles will be considerably more. 
or text A, B or C as your answer to 65330. Text costs £1 plus one standard network rate message. Red button viewers can enter by pressing red now or enter online for free at ITV.com. Entrance must be 18 or over. Entries made after lines close at 10am this Saturday will not be counted but may still be charged. And the sponsor of Britain's Best Dish, The Chefs, is... Tesco Finest Putty Poire with Leeks and Pancetta. If we insure your home, it seems right to include your garden too. It seems right to cover the things you may have in your outbuildings or garage. And if you want to talk to us about your insurance, pensions or investments, it seems right to have branches up and down the country. So we do. NFU Mutual. We do right by you. Tonight starters, fresh pea and ham hock soup with asparagus and pea ravioli and a red onion and goat's cheese tart tatin. Main courses, roast chicken with a creamy savoy cabbage and bacon and a king prawn paella with chicken and chorizo. And for dessert, a rich Belgian chocolate cheesecake and tarteau citron. All enjoyed at your regular table for two, with the finest and restaurant collection menus from Tesco. Every little helps. There's some incredible TV out there. With BT Vision, you won't miss a thing. Great Freeview channels, which you can pause, rewind and record with your Vision Plus box. Your favourite shows whenever you want with Catch Up TV. And add the latest HD films on demand. BT Vision. TV the way you want it. We believe that if love is a chemical reaction, Chemistry has a good chance to make the world a more harmonious place. Chemistry works so that plasters end up loving the water. Families are less afraid of energy bills. And even cars and city centers get along better. That's why we don't just make chemicals, we create chemistry. BASF, the chemical company. You've either got it or you haven't. Thankfully, Next have. Order by nine at night and Next Online will deliver the very next day. Perfect timing from next.co.uk. Order by nine at night for next day delivery. Just 60 seconds to full restore five your hair. New LV full restore five 60 second saviour from L'Oreal with pro keratin and ceramide. Instantly infuses. Hair looks restored. Feels soft to touch. Weightless. Five problems. One saviour. LV 60 second saviour from L'Oreal Paris. If you're an EDF Energy customer, you too could be a London 2012 winner because we're giving you the chance to win tickets to the games. Introducing thank yous only from EDF Energy. And the sponsor of Britain's best dish, The Chefs, is... Tesco Finest Smoked Haddock Risotto. Hello again, welcome back to Best Dish, where Russell and Eddie are locked in battle here in the dessert kitchen. Two of the best in the southwest, and their time is almost up. I love watching you cook, Russell, because you are unbelievably calm. I'm trying. It's all kind of in slow motion. There's a lot going on, but no apparent yeah. kind of effort. 
Well, I hope there's a bit of effort in there. <laughs> well, there must be a lot happening, but maybe no. all the swan, are you paddling like crazy? I think so, yeah. Yeah, my heart's going like this. Is so. it really? <laughs> yeah, no, it is at the moment, so. You were, not worried exactly, but you were concerned about getting your caramel exactly right. Yes. And yeah. have you done that, do you think? Yeah, no, it was good, actually, and nice heavy based pan, so it controls the heat nicely. Um, yeah, temperature There's a question probe. over there whether it might have been a little bit too dark. It's brown sugar in there, so I think that probably looks darker than it actually tastes. Okay. So hopefully it's all right. No question of it being burnt. No, of or course not. Like that, no, no, definitely not. And what's going on in this pan? This is my last garnish. This is just some orange reduction, so it's literally orange juice, a little bit of sugar, reduce it down to a syrup, maybe adjust the acidity with a little bit of citric acid at the last minute, just to try and get the balance right on the dish. So. Well, I'll leave you to do the last few bits and pieces. Lovely. And Eddie? Yep. All is well? Yep. Yeah? All good, all good. I'm on course. What have you got going on in there? Uh, that's just the end of the crumble. Mm-hmm. So I'll just bring it back up to the temperature now. I'm just going to finish it with some crumble mix on the top, just in a little cutter. I've got to tell you, there's a lot of excitement about those donuts. Yeah. A lot of excitement. <laughs> I've never heard the judges so excited about anything. They are desperate to get their teeth into those. Okay. I'm going to get out of the way oh. for the last few seconds. Okay, it's time to plate up. So who'll have bragging rights in the southwest? Russell used the appliance of science in his salted toffee tart with cookie crumb and orange reduction. In theory, it touches every taste bud, but has he got his formula right? Eddie wants his name in the paper, but will it be cracking crumble with divine donuts take top honours in the national press, or young chef loses heat in the Somerset Echo? Okay, judges, time to uh, start tucking in. And let's start with Russell's salted toffee tart. Ed. The toffee um, is very salty. I find it very salty when you taste it by itself, but when you combine it with the uh, sorbet and the orange, it's like a cocktail. It's obviously what Russell set out to do. I think he's achieved that extremely well. Getting a nod from Russell there. Jilly, what did you think? It was a great act of self-discipline on my behalf not to keep eating. <laughs> I loved it. I think your sorbet has that sort of fresh cleansing property to it that just is a foil to the richness of your tart. I'm really sorry that I'm eating this in a competition because I want to <laughs> wolf through the whole lot. Good. Get over there. John, what do you think? Right, more or less what Ed said, really. If you eat them just the sorbet and this, it doesn't really work because the salt is so mind-blowing. It's a bang. And I'm not sure if you're allowed to put that much salt in things. Let's move on now Ooh. to Eddie's. Well, I mean, it's just a beautiful looking thing. Is you've got donuts, you've got crumble, you've got ice cream, you've got jelly. So tell me what you think, Jilly. Well, Typical of me to home into the cider, but I love the cider in your jelly. But I did feel that your donut was very slightly too stodgy. So, Ed, what did you think? The crumble I really enjoyed. I really thought it was lovely. Great flavours. I liked the crispy topping on it. Um, the donut's gone wrong um, because it's too um, clagging. Um, <clears throat> question mark what type of flour you used. And also the, the proving of the donuts yeah. as well, because you only had a short That's space of issue, time. Yeah. And, and I think it, the second prove, the first prove was good. Yeah. You shaped them, and then you cooked them relatively quickly after that, and I don't think the second prove was long enough. There's you know a I mean? bit harsh about the donut, because the well, donut is just okay. a, like the second prove. It's not about the flour, and it's the timeline. So, you know, right. maybe you can rearrange your, t if you come back, you could rearrange your time order and method. And so get them on a bit earlier, maybe. Um, what do I think of this? Um, my favourite jam in the world is apple and blackberry. When you put a custard donut on top, then give me some j a cider jelly as well, then you give me a sorbet, I'm done. I'm in heaven. Well, that was new, but different than 50 covers for lunch. <laughs> I think the judges' comments were fairly fair. Um, the salt in the toffee tart, mm, I'd maybe argue about that. So, lucky judges, they've sampled both mains and both desserts. 
lucky then. They've got some tough decisions.